Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the strangest laws around the world. I did a strangest laws for the US 50 state, and so I figured why not try some around the world. We're only going to be looking at 13 strange laws from around the world, because probably a lot of laws that we aren't going to be able to cover. But if you know a strange law didn't make it to the list, don't be afraid to comment down that below, because I am very interested to finding out what that is. Also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. But enough of all that, let's just get into it. So there is no particular order for these laws. There's not like, oh, this one's crazier than this one. It's just these are 13 laws that are strange around the world. Alright guys, so the first place we're going to be going going to on this list is actually in Europe and it is in Italy in this little tiny island right here called Capri. That's probably actually not how you pronounce it, but don't ask me. I am not Italian, but this is where the law is from. And the law is the DNA test if you don't clean up after your dog in Capri. So in Capri, to keep the island clean from visitors and residents, dog owners must clean up their streets if their dog poops on it. If not, they will trace the DNA of the poop of the dog to the owner and they can be fined 2000 whatever symbol that is the equivalent to $2,400 so pre if you uh take your dog on vacation just make sure to pick up after it i know in america we be slobs sometimes not all of america but definitely some places if they do not pick up after the dogs that's not cool bro okay don't be doing that all right guys next on the list we are going towards asia and that is actually down here in singapore around this bad boy right there Singapore. And I mean, this one's pretty famous if you guys didn't know. I actually knew this one before looking this up. Chewing gum is not allowed in Singapore. The sale, possession, and use of chewing gum have been banned in Singapore since 1992. 90s, bro. That's like 30 years ago, at least. Yes, that's right. Chewing gum is illegal and punishable up to two years in jail. That's crazy. I actually didn't know how bad it was. Like, I knew you couldn't chew gum in Singapore. I just didn't know if it was like, I figured you'd just get like a fine, you know, whatever. And apparently, though, it's a fine of $100,000. So, if you you want to be chewing gum in Singapore kudos to you you big ballin you just like yeah that's fine here's 100 grand give me some gum um so the reason they do this is was health risks and damage to the environment that one is probably the more bigger one damage to the environment this law demonstrates singapore's concern with the production of waste which in the case of gum takes many years to decompose and ends up accumulating apparently in an interview in 2000 prime minister lee kuan yu which i probably didn't say that correctly i'm very sorry confronted about the chewing gum which helps creativity and his answer was that chewing gum is a crime and that anyone who needs to chew something to be more creative can simply chew a banana <laughs> I'm about to try chewing some bananas, bro. See how that, see how that, you know, messes with my mind, with creativity and whatnot. Uh, but apparently their law is now relaxed 2004, which the government allowed medical sales of chewing gum. If it's prescribed by your doctor, you're all good. All right, the next one on the list for uh, some pretty weird laws is over here in Switzerland, boy. It's right there, Switzerland. Flushing the toilet at night is considered noise pollution in Switzerland. Noise pollution. So, you know, loud parties and people playing music in the middle of the night when they should be sleeping are you one of those people who wakes up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom uh yeah every day avoid doing this when you go to switzerland or at least remember to leave the tank afloat until dawn bro i'm not leaving no tank afloat if i'm dropping a doozy I'm just saying. Uh, because that flushing noise after 10 p.m. can be considered noise pollution under the country's law. Wow. So I guess in Switzerland, you can't be dropping doozies in the middle of the night. So you're going to have to hold that bad boy in there. And if you do drop that doozy, it has to sit there until next morning. It seems like this law might be for people who are close to people, maybe. Maybe it's like you live in a condo, an apartment. Maybe this is more a real thing. I figured if you live in a house and your neighbor's far enough, I don't think they care. But if y'all fools got some loud flushers i don't know i've never been to switzerland y'all fools let me know all right so next on this list is actually just africa apparently as a whole so this might not even be an actual law but it's on the list so we're gonna go ahead and talk about it wearing camouflage clothes is considered a serious crime in africa unless you're in the military wearing camouflage clothes is pretty outdated but there are those who like it in that case it is better to leave them in the wardrobe when traveling through some countries in africa and the caribbean in these places wearing camouflage prints is a serious crime and can be considered uniform forgery so i don't know how true this uh, law is uh, in africa it might just be one of those things that frowned upon or it could probably possibly be because obviously there's a lot of poaching in africa so we don't want people wearing camouflage because then we're probably going to consider them as poachers and then obviously we don't want poachers in africa so i understand if that's what the law is trying to consider all right guys next on the list we're going to be looking at country in asia to sri lanka right here in case you didn't know and the law is taking selfies with buddha is considered an offense in sri lanka so when you be visiting over there in sri lanka don't be crazy and be taking a selfie in sri lanka taking a picture with your back to the statue of buddha is considered a great offense i can see how that that can be offensive at least you know to people from Sri Lanka. You may be forced to delete the photos. If you refuse, the police may be called in. Wow, they for real. 
taking this stuff serious. Photos are allowed next to the Buddhas, sideways with the body facing him and only the head facing the photo, but never the back with the Buddha behind. So if you go to Sri Lanka, if you're gonna take a selfie, I suggest you don't, but if you do, sure no one catches your ass because you're going to jail. Or at least the police gonna be involved and they're gonna make you delete stuff or maybe take your phone. I don't know. I wouldn't consider that a weird law. That's just like a cultural law, I think, because you know, I'm sure uh, people from Sri Lanka have different customs. All right, so next one on the list, we're actually going to North America, but it's not in the United States. It's actually in our homies above us, Canada, next to Toronto, but not actually in Toronto. This city right here called Oshawa. So I'm not sure if this is just that place specifically or if it's all Canada or just the state in Canada or province. I don't know what you guys call states over there. I'm sorry, guys. I need to learn more about Canadian history since you guys are our closest neighbors besides Mexico. Um, the law here, though, is forbidden to climb trees in Oshawa, Canada. So for the, I can't even read this word. I don't know what that means. Parks, squares, and public spaces are the ideal places for children who live in cities to play freely. The bad news for those who live in the city of Oshawa is that there is a law that prohibits them from climbing trees in municipal parks. One of the bylaws for the city says, no person shall interfere with a tree or part of a tree located on municipal property, including but not limited to attaching, affixing, or placing upon a matter of any object or thing to a tree or part of a tree, and climbing the tree. So the Canadian law discusses, okay, sorry. So the Canadian law discusses, talks about the origins of the law. Oh, that, this is the first time they're going to give us an origin for some law. Let's see. This law was put into place to prevent citizens from trying to act like Spider-Man. Nice. The city of Oshawa says that they care deeply about the safety of their citizens, and therefore this law is in place. So Yafu's trying to be Spider-Man, huh? I wonder when the law was made, because I would like to know the date. Alright, so I tried looking for this law, and I could not find the date it was created. I'm assuming it was recent, because they're talking about Spider-Man. I mean, I guess Spider-Man was around... I think in the 60s or 70s, but this isn't a law that's super old, I think. If you know when this was created, let me know. All right, guys, next we're going back to Europe, and apparently Italy has all the weird laws because we have another law coming up from Italy in this tiny little town called Turin. Wow. Okay, so this is a serious offense, apparently, but not talking talking. Not taking your dog for a walk three times in a day is a crime in Turin, Italy. I mean, how the fool's gonna know you ain't taking your dog on a walk? three times a day. If you own a dog in Turin, the law requires you walk it outside at least three times a day. If you don't, you can get a hefty fine of up to 500 euros, $650, under a new law from the city council. So they really love their pets in Turin, Italy, which is, I think it's a good thing. And I don't see how they can enforce the not walking your dog three times a day, but it is a weird law that's in place in case maybe you just don't like your neighbor. You're like, oh, I know this fool don't be walking his dog three times a day. Let me call it cops on him. I feel like this is a hard law to enforce, but I guess it is a strange law compared to most regular kind of laws. All right, this next law, we're actually going to be going to Oceania. And I don't see it because it's probably really small right now, but it's somewhere out here. Where are you? America, Samoa, here we are, Samoa. So this next law is in Samoa with forgetting your wife's birthday may lead you to jail. <laughs> I think this is probably a joke, but let's read into it. The world is full of forgetful husbands, 100%. But Samoa, Oceania, is trying to improve that. This is forbidden to forget the wife's birthday and the husband must answer answer to justice and still indemnify the wife if he does so. I don't even know what this word means. Doesn't sound good. If the wife ends up complaining about this awful mistake to the police, the husband may have to visit the lockup and have to answer to some brutal questions. Yeah, I think this is more of a joke. I don't think this is a real thing. I don't know. So the best option for husbands in Samoa is to keep their wives happy so that even if they end up forgetting their birthdays, at least the wives won't complain about them. I mean, I'm pretty sure your wife's still gonna complain about you, but you know, it's all good. I'm just kidding for wives who watch this. I don't think any wives watch me, so it was a joke. I'm just kidding. But the best option for them is to remember to wish her on her birthday and buy her some nice presents. I mean, I think any man can easily say we should never forget our wives or significant others' birthdays because that is a death sentence. But that's a given. I don't think you need to make a law for that. Alright guys, this next law actually isn't that far from Samoa and it's actually in Australia. It's in Victoria down here. Victoria, Australia. And that law is changing light bulbs is illegal. Wow. Well, this, this place specifically in Australia. This Australian law may surprise you, but it makes more sense. Yes, please explain to us why it makes sense. Under Victorian law, changing a light bulb without a valid license. Oh, you need a license to change a light bulb? Is against the law. The in Victoria, only a certified electrician are allowed to change a light bulb. If this is not respected, you will be fined. How are they gonna know that I need my light bulb changed if I just change it? There has to be a reason why, though. Why do you need... I mean, 
a certified electrician? Maybe they're really like, you know, we don't want people to be stupid and get shocked. Or maybe they don't want them to use certain light bulbs. I don't know. It just seems kind of, that is a strange law. That's pretty weird that it's illegal to change your own light bulbs. You need a certified electrician. I don't know how many of you have changed light bulbs, but I do it all the time. I can't imagine having to call someone when my light bulb breaks. Hey bro, I need you to come change this for me. It just makes me feel like I'm lazy. I mean, they must have a valid reason. I don't know. All right, next on the list, we're going back to the same. This person who wrote this list must love Italy. Or maybe they're from Italy. I don't know. Yeah, because it's from Italy again. Maybe Italians just like making weird uh, laws. Uh, but this new law is from Venice, Italy. And it is feeding pigeons is not allowed in Venice, Italy. So anyone who visits Italy knows that the number of pigeons is really a problem at the major tourist attractions. Well, that would not surprise me. Such as Milan's Duomo and Siena Cathedral. With that in mind, in 2008, the Italian government... Oh, so this was in 2008. Finally, finally tell us the dates. The Italian government banned pigeon feeding in Venice, famous St. Mark's Square, where pigeons literally stole the show. If anyone would be found caught feeding them, they will be fined 700 euros. Local authorities have banned this custom because birds pose a risk to health, but also to protect monuments. Okay, that makes sense. No, yeah, I actually seen this in movies, so... It is pretty famous, but I can see why they banned this. I mean, birds poop a lot, especially if you feed them. So to protect the monuments, I understand. Especially because that's, I mean, Italy is famous for having, you know, people come visit there. So it might be a little strange, but it's all good. All right, next on this list, we are going back to Canada. So this is Canada in a general, all of Canada. Valuing national music in Canada, which pretty much just means a law determines that 35% of content broadcasted on radios must be from Canadian artists. I don't even know if that's a law. I guess it says a law determines that, but I feel like this is a law that isn't very enforced. All right, next, we're actually finally coming to the United States, even though we already know all the weird lists from every single state. Uh, but this one specifically is from Tennessee, and that is sharing your Netflix Netflix password is an offense in Tennessee. So there is a particular law in the US that prohibits sharing your Netflix password with anyone. The weirdest thing about this is that Netflix itself allows up to four users to access the service simultaneously on different devices. The law does not include Netflix, but all entertainment content services such as cable TV. The fine for sharing a password is high, a fine of $2,500 and a year in prison. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, here we go. Apparently Americans be making some crazy laws because uh, I haven't seen too many crazy crazy ones today. Not really. Except the one in America where you can actually go to jail. Maybe that's why we have such a high prison population. The law was pushed through with the help of recording industry lobbyists trying to stop the bleeding that is illegal music sharing and apparently illegal movie streaming. If you are caught, you could face the big fines, a misdemeanor, and obviously jail time. And apparently if you're severe enough, if you're a person who is a password dealer, which I didn't even know that existed, you could be charged with a felony for sharing your Netflix password. All right, well don't be no Netflix dealer guys because we don't want that over here. That's a horrible way to go. Why you in bro? Selling passwords, bro. Selling passwords for Netflix. So we're looking at 13 from this list because this list has 13. The last one is actually in a place we all know in Asia, North Korea, with the famous you know who. They have so many laws there that I can't even say there's just one weird law. But we're only going to be looking at one today, and that is you cannot make international calls because it is a crime in North Korea. Shocking. Very shocking. Did not know that. I don't live in North Korea, and I could have assumed that that was a crime. <laughs> North Korean citizens cannot make international calls, and it is considered a crime there. According to a report in 2007, a North Korean factory boss was Baba Boy. by a firing squad in front of 150,000 people after being accused of making international calls on 13 phones he installed in the factory basement. Wow. Obviously the craziest law on here. I thought we would have seen a lot more from around the world. Next time I will do specifically certain parts of the world. But yeah, North Korea. That's crazy. That's not surprising though at all. I mean, if you know anything about North Korea, then you know. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I feel like there's probably a lot more laws that we didn't even come close to considering from the Justice list that I looked at. Definitely comment down below some of the laws you know from around the world that are crazier than all these. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.